Ta kadosh boker or mesechet babakama daflamet gimel amud alef 33a1. We were talking about the entire concept of that this nagar, this napach. Yeah, what happened was is that he told his apprentice to leave, so he thought that he left, and all of a sudden the guy didn't leave, so he was still there, and then he got hit and he was killed. So we went and we said that what happened is, is that if the master is coming and trying to get him to go out. And he thought that he left. So for anybody, it could be. Why did it have to be Dafka the, the apprentice? So the Gemara answered, and this is on the top of Lamagim Lamubet Al Mudalif, where we stopped yesterday, that another person does not have a matad de rabbe. This person has the ema of the rabbe. What does that mean? If it's anybody else, and he comes and he tells the guy, listen, get out of here, why would the guy really listen? Saying, okay, it's a store, it's a, but he doesn't have a fear of this napach or of this guy. Here, right, in our case, he does have fear. Why? Because he's the student. And since he's a student, he has fear of his master. Okay? Rav Zvid, Mishme de Rava, Matmila Aha. Rav Zvid, in the name of Rava, comes, and he taught these words on this. It says, Umatsa, meaning, it says over there in the Pasuk, we're talking about somebody that comes and he kills Bishogeng. And it says over there that he's going to He's going to come and he's going to find the guy. Prat lemamsi et atzmo. So when it says the word, right, umatza, it's coming to exclude somebody that he puts himself there. What does that mean? Mikana mara b'liyaz ben Yaakov. From here, b'liyaz ben Yaakov says, Mishi atzta eve mitachet yado. If somebody comes and he takes out the stone, ve'otzi halla et rosho. The other guy comes and he takes out his head. The kibla and he and he gets it in his forehead. He's going to be patur. He's going to be but he's going to be in the four different things. Okay? So says the Gemara, man de matni la'aha, the one that learns on Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Hanin on this bright that the mamsi it at small, because since it said, umatza et rehu, and that comes to exclude somebody that's mamsi it at small, but he puts himself in that scenario. So therefore, kol shikana kamaita, all the more so in the first case, Right, where the Nezek was after he already threw the stone, right? Because since he threw it in a place where people are usually there, so Kol Shekin, that uh, you know, it's going to be considered the Kaposhia. But the one that taught it on the first case, which is basically in the previous Praita, he holds that only in that case you're going to be Chayav in the fourth Vadim. Why? Because since he saw him come inside his store, so he was Pasha, he was Poshia, and the fact that he wasn't careful anymore. But in this case, the Braita is going to be Patur Legamre. Right? Why is he going to be Patur Legamre? Because even though he came, right? And, right? Even though he came and he threw, right? The stone in a place which people are usually there, right? There was nobody Misuyam that was there that was going to accept it. So therefore, he came afterwards. So he's considered honest. Yeah, it was honest. Right? It was force majeure, as they say. Fine. Next. This is a case now. He learned in a Braita. Imagine right now you worked for a guy. So you go to his house and you want to collect payment. And when you go to his house, you get gored, right? So the short of the Balabait comes and he gores the guy. Or the dog of the Balabait comes and he attacks you. Umet, one of the Polim, they die. Patur. The Balabait is Patur from Kofi. Why? Because nobody had permission to go inside. So therefore, it was like he came in, the right? Without his knowledge. Yeah, it was like trespassing. Other people say, what are you talking about? I don't understand you. He worked for you. He's permitted to go to your house now to start asking you for the money. Oh, why, why? You could start saying that he doesn't have the permission to go to... We're not talking about that he was coming through the backyard, through a cave, or I don't know what, to try to get into the house. We're talking about time he went into your property to go to knock on the door to get the money. So says the Gemara, what are we talking about here? If we're talking about the Balabait is common in the city, so therefore, my time the Akhirim, so then why is the reasoning of the Akhirim? Meaning, if this guy is all the time going to the Shulk, going to the Beit Knesset, get him in the Beit Knesset, why do you have to go to his house? Yeah, so why do Akhirim come and say, that they're allowed to, right? The the shriach rabbit, if the guy's always at home, so what's the reasoning of Tanakama? Why in the world then they cannot they, they cannot go to the house to start demanding their money? 
So answers are Gemara. La tzricha, what are we dealing with? Begavra de shchiach velo shchiach. Sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not there. Basically, you know, this guy, sometimes he comes, sometimes he doesn't come. You know, there's a lot of people there. Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, you don't see them for a few times of Milchayin Arvit, and you start asking, you know, you start wondering why you're there. So then they start getting messed up between Marechenu and Marechalenu because they didn't realize they weren't there. And you understand, I mean, there's a lot of times that things like that, they happen, because the second that people, the second that they're not uh, with you, that's it. You understand? So says the Gemara, what are we talking about? A guy that is shiach below shiach, meaning that sometimes he's here, sometimes he's not here. So the Kariya Bava, right? So they called him. They called him at the entrance. They called him by the gate. And he said, in yes. What does that mean? More savar, more, more holes in means ul. Come up. Right? Tamashma, right? Ul tamashma. What does that mean? Come here. Like, come inside. More savar in. The other one holds no. When it says yes, it just means stay where you are. Did you hear? That's actually something that happens many, many times. You go to somebody's house, yes. What does yes mean? Yes means come in, or yes just means stay where you are. Yes, yeah. what do you need? You understand? The exact same thing that we just mentioned. The exact same. So, Taina, we learned on the right that Kemandama, like, we go to Mandama, in the Kuma Dukhtech Mash, means stay where you are. The Tanya's we learned in the right, a person who has to go to the house and go to the house and go to the house. Patur is going to be Patur. After the person who has to go to the house and go to the house, why is it going to be Patur? But rather, the Kaya Baba of Amal Le'in, he was at the gate and he said yes. So we come to teach you that when it says in, Kuma Duchtech Mashma, it's Mashma, stay where you are. I never told you to come in. So the fact that I never told you to come in and you actually came in, you're the one that's lying. You're the one that's lying. Okay? Fine. Makes sense. Let me give you the Mishnah. Okay? Around halfway down. Right? There's going to be another Mishnah later on as well. Shne Shvarin Tamin. Bechavlu Ze Et Ze. When you have two shores that they are Tams. Yeah? Shechavlu Ze Et Ze. But they hit each other. Yeah? Um Meshalmin Bamutar. Meshalmin Bamutar Chatzinezek. So what happens is, is you're going to pay the difference, the chetzinezek. What does that mean? We're talking about keren, correct? Which is negicha. Now we're talking about a nezek, which is which is the type of nezek of a short time that he only pays chetzinezek. Now muad pays nezek shalem. Right? This we already learned a few times. So now when you have two tams that they damage each other, so therefore they're going to pay the leftover chetzinezek, which means from the the extra. So, for example, let's say one one short did nezek of sixty, and another short did nezek of thirty. So it's going to be half of it. Why? Because at the end of the day, it's chetzi nezek. Shnehem muadin. What about if the both of them are muads? So mishalmi ba mutar nezek shalem. So you're going to pay nezek shalem. Echad tam echad muad. If one of them is a tam, one of them is a muad. Muad be tam mishalmi ba mutar nezek shalem. So the muad that goes the the tam he has to pay nezek shalem. Tam be muad he's going to pay. The same halacha would apply to two different people that they damaged each other. Okay, Mishalim Mutar is excited to pay the Nezek Shalem. Adam and Muad and Muad and Adam. If it's Adam to a Shor Muad or Shor Muad by Adam, Mishalim Mutar Nezek Shalem. Adam be Tam be Tam be Adam. If it's a human being to a Shor Tam, Shor Tam to a human being, Adam be Tam is going to pay Mishalim Mutar Nezek Shalem, but the Tam Muad is only going to pay Chetzi Nezek. Okay, Rabbi Akiva Ome. Rabbi Akiva says, "Af tam shechaval be adam meshalem amotan nezek shalem." So, to even a tam that's going to hit a human being, he's also going to pay nezek shalem. So, it's very interesting. He's saying the chetzi nezek is only talking about to animals or to utensils, but to a human being, you always have to pay nezek shalem, even if you're a tam. Okay. Until here, we're clear. Yes, that's Shittat Rabbi Akiva. Okay, Taru Rabbanan. Fine. The Brayta says, Taru Rabbanan, Kamishpat Aze Yaselo, Kemishpat Shor Beshor, Kach Mishpat Shor Be Adam. Just like when it says Kamishpat Aze Yaselo, what is that we're talking about? We're talking about the Mishpat of one shore to another shore, or the Mishpat of a shore Be Adam. What does that mean? We're comparing both together. 
just like shor be shor, atam is going to be משלם נזק, חצי נזק ומואן נזק שלם, אז אותו שור באדם, אז אתה משלם חצי נזק ומואן בנזק שלם. מניגע הזה סיימה לחוק. Right? אתם זה אתם, כמלנו. אז אני רוצה לדבר על זה. אוקיי? זאת הספר שיטה. רבי עקיבא ארגיוס, אני אעשה לו, רבי עקיבא אומר, כמשפט הזה, מה זה מין כמשפט הזה? כתחתון, יא, ולא כעליון. It's like the bottom one, and not like the top one. What does that mean? We're talking about the פסוקים האחרונים, and not like the פסוקים הראשונים. What does that mean? יכול אף משלם מן העלייה, כתחתון means like just like the משפט of a shore, that happened beforehand, right, which is a short muad, not a short tam. So he says, Yachod Meshalem in Aliyah, after the thought that he's going to pay from the Aliyah, Tamul Omar, comes to you, Yaseh Yeah? So Rabbi Akiva comes and he says, I would have thought to say that you're going to pay from the Aliyah. Tamul Omar comes to you, Yaseh Lo. What does mean Yaseh Lo? Migufo Meshalem. You're only going to pay from the body of the short tam. Ve'eno Meshalem in Aliyah, but you're not going to pay from the Aliyah. And now we're going to explain how do the Chachamim, which are Tanakama, they explain from the word Zeh. The Rabbanan, when it says Zeh, Lamali. Why do I need the Pasuk when it says Zeh? <coughs> because it says Hazeh. So we're talking about Oven Yigach, Oven Yigach, Kamishpat Hazeh. What is Hazeh? So he comes and he says this, the Potro Me'ar Badvanim. This comes to exclude from the four different things. Rabbi Akiva, and according to Rabbi Akiva, so he comes and he says, how do you know that you're going to come and you're going to be potato from the four different things? So he says, he learns it, right, from the ish, right, ish bamito, v'lo shor bamito. So when it comes and he says that when a person is going to come and put a blemish in his friend, so it's only an ish, a man that puts a blemish in his friend, but not a shor that puts a blemish in his friend. Okay? The Rabbanan, and according to the rabbis, if we're talking about now he from this pasuk ve'ish, hava min atzar lechudei. I would have thought to say that the tzar is by itself. Aval ripui v'shevet, but to do with ripui v'shevet, right? Emali, emali tenle. I would say that it would actually have to give it, which means I would say that even a shor that is going to be chovel has to pay nezek. What does that mean? One more time. Rabbi Akiva just learned that when it says Hazeh, it's coming to exclude from four different things, right? So he learns this, right? He learns this from the Ishki, Ten Muma Mito, that only an Ish that's going to hit his friend is going to have to pay these things, but not anybody else. But according to the rabbis, if it was only going to be written, the Ishki, Ten Muma Mito, have, I mean, I would have thought to say only by a by tzar, tzar by itself. That's the only thing, because the Tsar, right, is the Chabalav, the Shor Ba'adam, there, that's what you have to do. But the Pui Veshevet, which is going to be, right, something completely different, which is basically the, the, the medical bills or unemployment. I would say that he has to pay it. Right? Fine. Mishnah. Okay, Mishnah on the bottom of Lamed Gimel Mudalef. Says Mishnah, Shoshav Yemane Shenegach, Shoshav Yematayim, Verene Vela Yafa Krum, Notel Et Ashor. Imagine right now you have a shor which is worth 100 zoos. He gores a shore which is worth 200 zoos. And then what happens is that he kills it. And the nevela, the carcass, is not worth anything. So you know what happens? You just take the shore. Just take the shore, take the ox. Right? Why? He damaged 200 zoos. He only has to pay 100 zoos, but that's the value of the shore. So you just take the shore. Makes sense, no? Okay. Says the Gemara, uh, Is that if the guy cannot pay or by... by... The time was going to write that Yusham Ashor, they're going to evaluate the Shor and the Vedin. These are the words of Rabbi Shmael. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Rabbi Akiva says, What are you talking about? You just take the entire Shor. Right? So, what is the Machlok between them? So, he says, Rabbi Shmael Savar, Rabbi Shmael holds, Balchovu. This guy is considered a Balchov. So, he has to pay him money. Rabbi Akiva Savar, Rabbi Akiva holds, no. Shoot Fenin. This guy now becomes a shutaf, meaning the fact that it becomes, it was like a shutaf, because we're talking about the Shor Mazik was Shavet to the Shor Nizak, so therefore what happens is now he becomes like a partner. So that's why he's able by Kas. Now, all the machloka between Rabbi Ishmael and Rabbi Akiva has to do with this pasuk. It says in the pasuk, What does it mean? They're going to sell the Shor they're going to divide the money. 
So it says here, Rabbi Ishmael Sava, Rabbi Ishmael holds, Lebedina Kamaza Rachmana, that the Torah is talking about to the Bedin, that they have to come evaluate and sell the shore, and they have to give the half of the value. Rabbi Akiva Sava, Rabbi Akiva holds, no, Lanizak Umazik Mazele Rachmana. We're talking about the case of the Nizak and the Mazik, which they're going to sell it. So what is the difference now? What are we talking about exactly? So therefore they become like partners. And once they become partners, you're just going to take the shore. So my Ben what's the difference between them? Higdisho Nizak, what happens if you made it a Desh? Meaning it went, it damaged, and now you come and you make it a Desh. If you make it a Desh, what's going to happen now? Okay? So according to Rabbi Ishmael, it's not going to be a Desh because it's not yours. But according to Rabbi Akiva, it is Chal Desh. Why? Because he was only he was already Zacha in the shore, right? According to his Chatzinezek. Okay? So by me, Rabbi Menav Nachman, comes Rabbi Niyas Rabbi Nachman, Mecharom Azik, Rabbi Ishmael Ma'u, if he sold it, what's the Psaq according to Rabbi Ishmael? Kevin Darman Rabbi Ishmael, since he says, Balchovu, right? Vezuze Dumasikle. So therefore, it's considered he's got the money. So Machur, it's considered sold. Or Dilmar, maybe, right? Lamed Gim Lamu Bet, right? 33b. Or maybe Kevin the Mishabedle, since the shore is Mishu Abad to the Nizak, right? Love Kul Kimine, he cannot do so. Meaning, how could he come and he start selling it or still doing all those things? You don't have the power to do such a thing, right? So, again, the same thing. Here he came and he sold the damaging the, the, the shore, right? The Mazik came and he sold the shore even before coming to the Beddin. So, according to Rabbi Shmael, what's Allah? According to Rabbi Shmael, he says, I don't understand. He says, It's sold, it's sold. Or do we say, no, once it's Meshubad, you can't sell it. Now it's the cash. Yeah, so he says, he says, it's not considered sold. Right? But Tanya says, how can it be? There's a bracket that says, and says, no, you go back and you take the animal again. You take it back. Yeah, you take it. From the buyer? Yes. So if you're going to come and take it back, what does it mean, what does it mean that it's sold? So he says, Leridia, to do with Khadisha. That means if you came and you already did Choresh, uh, means you plowed, you don't have to pay for it. Okay? Why wouldn't you just take the cash? Because right now you're... Now you're Let's say it was sold for less. Now you're damaging the buyer. Let's say it was sold for less. So the buyer gets his money back? Yeah. From the guy. So the bedin has the power to cancel the transaction? Of course. All the time. Okay? Mm-hmm. Shema Mina, so we learn from here. Lava machar metaltan. If a person comes and he borrows money and then he sells the metaltan, betin go vinlo men. The betin could come and take it away. Right? So he says, but now usually we don't do say that. Because we, all, we usually say that by metaltan, it doesn't work to a lien. A lien is usually on a property, not on metaltan. Here it's metaltan. So says the Gimara, Shane Hatam, it's different over there. By Shoshanagach, right? He says, because you made it like an apotheke. A apotheke is basically you made it that it's going to be a place where to collect from. So the fact that you made it from a place where to collect from, so it's got different talachot. So ask the Gemara, how could you say such a thing? It says, Rama Rav Rava says, Asav do apotheke le right? U machro, by balchov gove menu, right? The short apotheke u machro, em balchov in menu. It's certainly a furash. If you made apotheke on an eved, you're right, you collect. But if it's on a shore, you cannot collect. So then what's, what are you talking about then? So says the Gemara, what is the reason why it doesn't help in every Even my Tama, by why? Because there's a call. Hainami, Kevin Nagach, once it scores, there's also a call. The Torah Nagchanaka, they call it a, a, a shore, a shore uh, Nagach. Meaning this animal, right, they're going to start calling it a nickname. And because they start calling it a nickname, it's got a different talachot now. Okay. Just because it, just because it goes. Yes. So you're gonna call it. It's like a wild dog. What is a wild dog? Because it starts biting people, right? Or a wild uh, ox. Why? Because it starts goring people. So the second that it gores, it's got like a new, uh, a new name, new nickname. Okay. So Tani of Tachlifa Bar Marava Kamed Rabbi Abu. So Tachlifa right from Bar Marava comes and he asks, and he asks the following: Shor Shenagachu Mecharo and Machul. We said if, if the shore comes and it gores. And then you come and you sell it. It's not considered machur. Igdisho, but if you made it a gdesh, right? Mudash, it is considered a gdesh. Mecharo man, who's the one that sold it? Who's the one that sold it? Is the one that sold it the one that got damaged or the one that damaged? Which one? 
אילה עם המזיק, איפה גנתה מצד המזיק? מחרו עם הרחול מאני, so who is this? It's all it's going to be Kiva. תראי איסס הוחלט השור, that it becomes completely the other person's property. והקדישו מוקדש, is going to go into the shit of Rabbi Shmel, that he says you shall have a shop of a team. Right? Basically like this, the, the psak that you just said does not make sense. Because if you're going to tell me mechoro en machul, so why is it then that if you made it a kdesh, it is a kdesh? It's like a stira. If you sell it, it's not a good sale. But if you made it a kdesh, it is a good kdesh. Uh, I don't understand. You, you, have to, you have to explain. Like, what does that mean? It's either that it doesn't belong to you or it does belong to you. Ela, but rather, nizak was the one that sold it. Right? So eno machul mani. So who's the one that says that it's not going to be machul? He says of Ishmael, so Ishmael, that he says, Yikdisho Mugdash, and that goes according to Shittav, Rabbi Akiva. So says the Gemara, Leolam, Mazik, really, by man, we're talking about the Mazik. But the Divrei Akol, and according to everybody, Mecharo Ano Machur, when we're talking about now that it's going to be sold, right, that it's not going to be a good sale, even according to Rabbi Ishmael. Why? Ta Meshabda Leil, and Izak, it's Meshu'abad, it's got to lean to the Nizak. And therefore, Yikdisho Mugdash is even according to Rabbi Akiva, because of Rabbi Avud. Amar Rabbi Avud says Rabbi Avud, Gezira Hashem Yomru, Vay Hekdesh Yotze Velo Pidyom, which means like this. There is a Gezira, then maybe they're going to start saying that Hekdesh goes out without any type of a Pidyom. So because we don't want that anybody is going to come and start doing that, it should come. Yeah. He comes and he says, because of that, so what happens is that it becomes, um, it becomes Hekdesh, because we do not want that people are going to start saying that it could come out right, without any type of uh, Hekdashim or things like that, okay, without any type of Pidyon, meaning we don't want that it should go out in such a fashion, so because of that, we want to make sure that it's done properly, so therefore, if you sold it, it's not a good sale, it's not yours to sell, but if you make it Hekdash, it's Hekdash, why? Because if not, people are going to start saying, ah, look, you could take out Hekdash without even redeeming it, and it's not really true, it's just that it was never Hekdash, but people don't know that, so since people don't know that, it doesn't work. Short time she is Zik. If you have a short time that comes and damages, the Ad Shalom Ahmad Badin, Mecharo, right? And until it didn't get to the Deen, they sold it. It's a good sale. Higdisho, if he made it a Gdesh, it's going to be a Gdesh. Shechato, once he slaughtered it, and he gave it as a present, whatever he did, he did. Mishamad Badin, but once it already came to the Badin, and it already stands by the Badin, right? Which means that they come and they say that he's going to be Chayav. It's not a good sale. The Hekdesh is done on Hekdesh. And if he slaughtered and he gave it as a present, he didn't do anything. Okay? Kadmu ba'alei chovot. What happens if the ba'alei chovot come? The Hekbiu. And they took it. Right? What does that mean? They took the shore as a chov. Meaning, they, this guy owed money. So the collectors, the, 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 how do you call those uh, collection agencies? They come, they took it away from him. So ben chav at shelo izik. Ben izik at shelo chav. Lo asu velo kulum. They didn't do anything. Right? Why? It's only going to pay from its body. Okay? Muad Shizik. We're talking about now a Muad that comes and damages. Right? Ben Shamad Badin. Right? Ben Shalom Ahmad Badin. Whether it was that he was Ahmad Badin or not. Mecharo Machur. It's going to be a good sale. Higdisho Mugdash. And Higdash is going to be a good Higdash. Shechato Umtanom Matana Mashat Sasui. If they slaughtered and they gave it as a present, whatever they did, they did. Right? If they came and they already took the Baalei Chovot and they picked it up, Ben Chavat Shelo Izik, Ben Izik at Shelo Chav, whether it was Chavat Shelo Izik or Izik at Shelo Chav, whatever he did, he did. Because now he's only going to pay from the Aliyah, not from the Gufa Shosh and Agach. If you remember here, we said, right, that there's going to be a difference between paying from the Nechse Amazik or from the Shor itself, right, Shenagach. Because we said that the Shor, Right, is only Mishtalem Migufo. Okay, but if it's Muad, that's not even Migufo anymore. It's still the property. Right, remember, when a Muad damages, you have to pay me the Aliyah. Aliyah means you have to pay from the best of the best, as none do the Shore. The Shore could have a value of $2. I don't care. He damaged a thousand, he's paying a thousand. I don't care uh, what the value of the Shore is. But to do the Tam, it all depends on the value. So Amar more and more says, Mecharom Machur, what does it mean? That if you sell it, it's going to be a good sale. Again, the Ridya, to do with uh, Harisha, plowing. It's going to be like Rabbi Avu, that we didn't want that it should go out without Pidyo. Okay? Fine. Nekuda. Says the Gimara, You slaughtered and you give it as a present. Whatever you did is good. 
I understand that if you gave it as a present, whatever you did, you did. But if you just come and you sold it, and now it's like uh, consider that you sold it for plowing, right? He comes and he says, yeah, so he says, right? So what's going on then? If you slaughter it, what does it mean now? Go take the, the meat and sell it. And I'll take from that, and that's what you're going to do. The Tanya, as we learned in Abraita, Chai, Eli Ela Chai, Shechato Minayim. Chai is only by, right, if it was alive. What about now if you did Shechita? So, Tamun Umar, Machru at the Shor, Nikom Akom. They're going to sell the Shor, right, nevertheless. Okay, so Amar of Shizbi. Says of Shizbi, Loni Tzicha, what are we talking about? The Pachat Shechita. We're talking about for Pachat Shechita. So, Amar of Urav Yerushua, says of Urav Yerushua, so to minute, we learn from here, Shemazik Shibudo Shel Chavero Patur. If I'm going to come and I'm going to damage something which is Mishu'abad to the friend, you're going to be patur for paying the Balchov on this Nezek. Because the shore which was Mazik is Mishu'abad to pay Tashum Nezek. Now even though the writer is going to say that the Shokhto is not going to be Chayav L'Shalem, et Pachat HaShchita, the fact that it's going to go down in Shchita. So one more time, you come and you damage, but you didn't damage Stam anything. You damage something which is Mishu Abad to your friend, something which is subjugated to your friend. Right? Your what friend is that? A right. Right. A, a right, exactly. It's a right. A, it's not, a yes. So he comes and he says, so for example, here it gives a case that you are a Chofer Borot Makarka, right, which is Mishu Bede Le Chavero Avurchov. So you're a Patur from pain. Okay? So he says, why? Because this Shorah Mazik was Mishu Abad to pain. And still the writer says that if you did shita, you don't have to pay for it. That now that it went down in value. Meaning the fact that you did shita, now it's not alive anymore. It's, it's less in value. It's not considered a live animal anymore. It's a dead animal. So it went down in value. So it comes out that even though he just did that, you can't do anything. Whatever is done is done. Okay? So says the Gemara, right? Shita, obviously. Why wouldn't you say that? So says the Gemara, I would have thought to say, Hatam over there. Udamale, he says, Lo I didn't let, make you lose anything. Tamale was him, Zika I just took a little bit of ruach away from him. What does that mean? He says, What? The shkita's there. What, uh, he just had ruach hayim. He just had a little bit of life. I took away that life. Right? So he says, Aval be'alma, but in a normal case, you should say you're going to be chayav. Kamash Balan comes teach you that no, that really be met. Right? There's no difference between shkita and any other thing. If you damage something which is Meshua bad to somebody else, you're patur. Because you didn't actually get rid of money. You only got rid of like a shiabur, a, a subjugation, a lien. That's what you got rid of. You didn't actually get rid of money. So you reduced the value yeah. of his lien. Okay. But at the end of the day, you only got rid of the lien. The lien is not the actual money. That's what we're trying to say. So, you're not, so you're not, you're not, you're not, uh, well, that's what the Gemara says until now. Right? Hanami, right? Says the Gemara. There's also a Chidush. Rabbi Amra, Tamar Rabbi, Rabbi says, Imagine right now you have debt documents. You know what debt documents are? People owe you money and you have a folder. Right? This guy owes you money. The other guy owes you money. The other guy owes you money. What happens? Yeah, what happens is is that after having all these guys that they owe you money, right? What happens is is that you come, you take the folder and you say, I want to know, this paper burn well? You turn it and it goes on fire. And my own own documents. No, not to your own documents. No. I'm doing it to your documents. Yeah. John Doe. Yeah? Is that is it? Patu. Says you're patu. It's only paper. It's only paper. It's only paper. Yeah? Ah, now you can come and collect your debts. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. He says at the end of the day, you were only Mazik the Shiabud. And therefore he comes and he says. According to Rabbi, he's come to teach you a person is not chayav if you destroy a shi'abu. <coughs> shi'abu is the is the is the lean. Yes, so you're destroying the lean. But just before you said if if you damage the some someone's lean, uh, so he says like this. Maud tema. I would have thought to say, right? because well, I just burned a piece of paper. What do you want? But if he comes into your property and he starts digging holes. You're right. This property was made as a lien to pay you back. 
right? But at the end of the day, he's actually making, he's not just taking paper and burning paper. He's making holes in your property, right? In the property which has linked you. So, come see, you know that it's the same thing. It's like you're just digging pits in the field. The Kama Masha says, so we just said whatever you did, you did. And that's it. Fine. Says the Gimana. Kadmu Bale Chovot. Right? What happens right now if the Bale Chovot came, the Igbiu, and they came and they collected the shore. Ben Chavat Shlo, Izik Ben Izik Shlo. Chav doesn't matter whether he was already obligated from before damage or after damage. Also, he didn't do anything. The Fishem Mishalem Yom Kufo was only paying according to the body. Remember, this is the Tam. The Tam only pays according to its body. So Bishma Izik Shlo Chav, I understand if he damaged it and then right before the Chov. Nizakin Kadmu because the Nizakin came before him. But if the Chov before, came before him, Balchov Kadim, so the Balchov was first. So why can't the guy take the Shor as a Balchov? Remember, which one came first? So just check which one comes first. Right? Vafilu Izik Ad Shalochav. And if you're going to tell me if he damaged even before the Chov, Balchov Kodem Shmamina, I'm going to teach you Balchov is Meuchar Shekadam Vegava Mashinim Balogva. That means if the Balchov comes later and he collects something, Whatever he collected is not collected. I Meaning, whatever he took is nothing. They have to give it back. So says the Gemara, no. Really, I'm going to tell you, whatever he collected, he collected. But it's different over there. Because he could tell him, if the shore was by you, right? Well, you wouldn't have collected something. Because this shore, right, that damaged me, right? I'm going to get paid from this guy. Which means that the Nizak is allowed to collect the shore in any Inyan. There's no difference in the Chazaka who has the shore or the Shi'abud of the shore. Why? Because I'm only collecting from this animal. So you could come and you could take from this animal. Therefore, even the Balchov wants to come and start stealing it or taking it or whatever, he's not stealing it. He does not, it does not help. He's able to actually come and collect this animal. 